Hey guys, Multiclassic Vlogs here on today is May 31st, Thursday, 2018. And it's, uh, well, it's been just a regular work day basically. Um, yeah, I went to work at noon today and I got back at 8 o'clock. It is now 10 19 p.m. And I'm just sitting here at my computer right now. Oh, I guess uh, one thing I could do today is I could show you my, the last instances of me collecting actually recently. So, I picked up three uh, Game Boy games in their original boxes, and with the instruction manuals and everything, and that is these games right here, the Donkey Kong Land Trilogy, and you know, a few years ago I didn't even know these games existed, but yeah, they are, they're basically Game Boy versions of the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy on the Super Nintendo, and... You know, the quality obviously doesn't match the Super Nintendo games, but it's still, for Game Boy games, they're pretty good still. So, yeah, I'll eventually play through those, eventually. Like, probably long after I play through the Donkey Kong Country series. I did beat the original Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Country last year, so it can happen. Just gotta get through Donkey Kong Country 2 next. And then 3, and then Returns, and then Tropical Freeze, and then so on and so forth. And this is probably the perfect year to do so, considering Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze was just re-released on the Switch, so eventually I'm going to have to pick that up and maybe try that version. I do have the Wii U version, and you know, it is kind of pointless for me to collect the Switch version, but you guys know me with my video game collecting these days, so, you know, just can't really help it. Yeah. I'm just so happy to, like, I'm always happy whenever I get the original box of an old video game system, because... You can you, sometimes you can tell just by the smell of the box how old it is, like especially with my pack, my copy of Pac-Man on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. That's a prime example of that you can just you can just smell the age of the box basically. Yeah, we I mean, had some time, good times today at work basically. You know, this is only work day two out of six though, so I've got four more to go. And one of them is an opening shift, and I hate that. I really hate opening shifts at work because, you know, I start at 6.30 in the morning. And, like, I know people are probably gonna just going to, you know, people who probably work earlier shifts than me are probably just going to go into comments and be like, well, I have to work this early. It's like, okay, well, that's you. You're you, and I'm going to tell you what I am. I am a night, a night owl. I prefer to be up later at night, and I prefer to sleep in, you know, later in the day. You know, for the past, up until I moved into this apartment, the past, like, basically, from the time that I went from being an overnight cashier to working at the new store in August last year, you know, basically up from that point on up until um, last month, I was basically going to bed at, like, 4 in the morning, wake up at noon, you know, and then going straight to work from there. That's what I've been used to the past several, you know, past several months. But then, you know, last month comes around, I move over here, and I'm working at another new store. And this time, they just my my schedule is just all over the place. Like I was practically like closing ninety percent of the time at my last store, and now here I am, like having a bunch of opening shifts and whatnot at my new store, just so I can keep my hours, you know, up to forty. So it's just, I just hate rotating shifts. I don't like the fact that I have to keep on constantly interrupting my sleep schedule, my natural sleep schedule that my, that my body is so accustomed to. You know, it's just not right. But that's just how I am. You know, no matter what the what they try to do to my schedule, I will always be a night owl. I will always stay up late. So if they give me morning shift, the only thing that's going to happen is I'm just going to have a lot less sleep going into the next day. You know, I can only wake up as, as late as like half an hour before my shift. So that means I have to wake up at 6 a.m., and if I'm used to going to bed at 2 or 3 in the morning, well, I'm only going to get like 3 or 4 hours of sleep, so that's that. You know? And there's... There's nothing to it, you know? It's just it is what it is. Yeah, there is an advantage to having an opening shift, though. At least if with that, you know, I'm getting off at 3.30 in the afternoon, and I'm still going to stay up as late as I can, so... You know, that just means I end up with, like, what, 12 hours to hang out, basically, after that. Yeah. That's, that is assuming that the next shift isn't an opening shift, which half the time it isn't. 
you know, pretty much like only one out of my six shifts that I'm going through right now are opening shift, the rest of them are mid shift. So, you know, most of the time I'm going to work at 11 in the after, 11 in the morning, and that involves me waking up at 10.30 at the latest. So, you know, I'm able to stay up most nights, but just not Saturday night, which is the night before my morning shift. So yeah, there's that. I did find out the other day about um, Dino Capri Sun's mom dying. You know, and I just, I, I really feel for Tim because it's, you know, I'm not going to go too much into it, but basically it's like, it's like first you lose your, uh, it just sucks, you know, like people who, who lose all their grandparents and then lose both their parents. That just, I just can't imagine being in that kind of, you know, dismay, but whatever, that's all I'm going to go into that. I'm just, I'm just, I just feel bad, but at the same time, I know. I know he'll get through this and he'll be fine, but still. It's just really sad. Like, even if I was in my 40s, I would still... I wouldn't bear to lose pretty much all my family like that. I wouldn't. But I can definitely tell you that I won't have grandparents on my, on my dad's side much longer. Without going into too much detail, um, my grandfather on my dad's side, he actually died um, around my dad's birthday, which is around Valentine's Day um, in 2010, so about a little over eight years ago. And although it didn't, I mean, like, it didn't affect me much because, you know, I didn't really get to know him much. I only saw him, like, twice in my lifetime. And that's because he lives lived all the way down in Oklahoma, which is where my dad's family is. So, you know, it just... Yeah, it just didn't really affect me all that much because I didn't see him very often. And now lately, within the past, with throughout the past couple of years, my grandmother on my mom, on my dad's side has been, you know, going through stages of Alzheimer's, and it's getting to the point where she can't, like, basically just very recently, it's gotten to the point where she can't live by herself anymore. Like she has to, yeah, it just it's just really sad. So basically before I know it, it won't be much longer. I won't have any grandparents on my dad's side. I still have the rest of the family down there, yeah, but still. I hardly ever see him as it is. But on the other hand, I've also got my grandparents on my mom's side up here. And, you know, they're doing really well. So, and, you know, it just it is what it is. So I'm just glad that I have family. But at the same time, I also, I feel for those who don't, you know. It's just a tough world, and that's how, that's just how it is. I wish it wasn't that way, but it is. Everyone has to go eventually. Well, at any rate, folks, uh, I got, the topic got kind of wrestling today, but I don't know how, how much time I'm up to today, right now. I think, uh, must be up to, oh, eight minutes, okay. Well, we're gonna cut it there, so I will see you guys in my next vlog whenever that is. I pause, also, I apologize for my long hair, um... A few years ago, I actually started this pattern, like this routine, sort of, where I give myself a haircut on the first day of the f first month of each quarter of the year, basically, if that makes any sense. So basically, like, uh, I get a haircut, I'm supposed to get a haircut tomorrow, June 1st, because tomorrow's June 1st, and then my next haircut after that is September 1st. The next haircut after that is December 1st. The next haircut after that is March 1st. And then back to June 1st and so on and so forth. So basically that's kind of the schedule on hair. I've kept myself on haircuts the past few years. And I'm going to keep it going because it's a simple schedule to follow. That's, it, it, it just it helps me gauge when, you know, when I need to get a haircut again basically. You know, regardless of the length of my hair at the time. So, but my hair does grow like at a steady pace, you know, just, it just happens to take three months to get long enough to the point where I just, I want to get rid of it, so, um, basically tomorrow is when I want to get a haircut, but it might not end up happening tomorrow because I still got four more work days left, so I might choose to just wait until, um, my day off next week, which is Tuesday, to get it done, or I might just do it, like, I might have to do it after a work day or something, it just depends on when the haircut plate, where the when the, yeah, haircut place closes. Um, I think it closes at 9 or 10, maybe? 
I don't know. But yeah, that's basically the plan. Just whenever I can get it, fit a haircut in within the next week or so, that's when I'm gonna do it. So, so you might, I might have my haircut tomorrow. I don't know. Who knows? So, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's vlog. And uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to June tomorrow. So, thank you so much. Bye.